I became interested in making guitars uh, shortly after I was playing myself and had difficulty getting uh, good quality guitars in those days. The, the cost of a guitar was very expensive and not having the money to buy one. Good guitars were very difficult to come by. The woods we used are, are mostly uh, spruce, which uh, we, we get here in British Columbia. That's for the, the top. Uh, the reason we use this wood is because it's a resonant type of wood. Uh, there's no other wood that'll duplicate the sound that spruce will give you. Uh, as for the back and sides, uh, it's uh, rosewood and it comes from India. Uh, this wood is very hard and is excellent for, for, tonal, for tonal properties. We bend the wood dry, which is quite a unique technique. And by just placing rosewood over uh, a hot iron, it melts the resin inside the wood and causes it to become quite flexible. Making guitars originally was, was a, a hobby, only to make guitars for myself. Uh, at first, I, like everybody else, would you question, gee, if I did this for a living, could I make any money? Well, much t to my surprise, it was almost an instant success. My family, uh, many of my family are cabinet maker. My father uh, had nine brothers, and most of them were cabinet makers, so I inherited that particular part. Um, eventually, I learned to play guitar, and the occasion came that I had the opportunity to meet Edgar Munch. He was a very fine guitar maker, known world over. And at one time, I went over to his home with a friend just as a visit, and he took a liking to me for some reason or other. 
I made a comment to him that uh, I'd give anything to know how to make a guitar. And he interpreted that as, could I come in and make a guitar with him? And he said, uh, sure, come in tomorrow. And that was the beginning of the whole thing in guitar making. One of my major function in, in the shop at this point is uh, also matching of all the woods that are used. At the early stage of the guitar, uh, one has to match the, the top, the back, the sides, and also match a neck to the body. And at this point, then the guitar evolves from there. And it becomes, over a period of four months, which takes the entire guitar four months to be made from beginning to end, and uh, there you see the neck being carved, do you see the, f and the inlays put in, the guitar being fretted, and so forth as it goes along. But all the pieces were matched long before that point. We select our employees in, a, I guess, a very strange manner compared to what most other people. We don't have... Uh, cards to fill in or all kinds of things like this. Uh, what we do is I have a, an interview with him just or her just walking in and I can normally tell within the first five minutes if I'm going to like that person or if that person is suited for that particular job. It's not as romantic as most people would have you believe. It's a very dirty job but it does have its rewards and the rewards are of course that when you you have a finished product it's a wonderful feeling to to have accomplished this type of uh, work. Over the years, if you keep, keep at it, it took over 10 years to develop, uh, possibly more like 12 years to develop this particular style that we have. It also took a long time to get recognition from people uh, looking at, at a guitar that doesn't look like all the other guitars. It looks somewhat different. Uh, I worked alone for quite a long time, but working alone is not always it kind of boring and it, it's nice to have somebody to work with. So this is how the apprenticeship with people became. So I started off with one person, and that person would spend an average of maybe two years with me. And then eventually they'd leave, and then I'd replace that person with another. And next thing you know, there was five and six and seven and ten. And, there was, and sooner or later, we had uh, quite a large workshop. One of the things that we try to retain is try to retain the, the, crafts, the craftsman type of uh, work, which was done years ago. Even though we use a lot of large machines and of all types, sanding, planing, cutting, and so forth, we still retain a lot of the small hand tool.
the cutaway became a uh, an interesting thing for us. We uh, I did the first ones in 1970 uh, for two uh, local musicians and. It was something that had been in the back of my mind for a long time. Even though we weren't the originators of Cutaway, I believe we were the, the people responsible directly for bringing it back. In the 20s and 30s, they had some Cutaways. Epiphone was one company that had a, a style of Cutaway, but it was nothing like what we're making right now. It's a very important thing uh, for musicians that play uh, jazz and other complex type music, whereas uh, frets are very difficult to, to get access to in the upper register. By having the cutaway gives you a perfect access to all 20 frets. The, uh, the morale in the workshop is, uh, is very interesting. Uh, we probably have less absentees than any company I can possibly imagine. Um, I don't really know why. I presume that the reason this happens is because everyone is very happy with their jobs. And to be able to work with your hands and to, be, and to relate to something like a musical instrument must be quite meaningful. I know it sure is to me. The skills involved in becoming a guitar maker is, is, of course, very high. And it's something that takes a long time to learn. One couldn't learn it in six months or a year. Uh, to be very good at it would probably take seven, eight, maybe 10 years, depending on the person. Some people are very quick learners. And you could teach someone of that caliber. Maybe in three years, you could teach them to be very good. But there are so many aspects to, to the job.
Because the guitars are, are shipped in every different country and different location you can possibly imagine from Yukon down to Florida to uh, Toronto, uh, Tokyo, and so forth, uh, the problem rises that the guitar has to be made under certain environmental condition. You can't make the guitars in a wet environment. You can't make the guitars in a dry environment. You have to compromise somewhere. You, so we follow a pattern which is uh, the best one we can find, come up with, and that seemed to be a 42% relative humidity to uh, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. For someone to be able to take a square piece of wood and to make it fit uh, a hand of a person and to be very consistent at it, not using a tool, but simply using a, a file or a uh, plane or a simple device like that, to be able to be very consistent at it takes a long time. And these people are very hard to come by and very rare. Quality control is done by everybody, and I trust them to, to handle their own department and to do that. Even though I, I go all day long and I check on different aspects of it, the employees do not need to be supervised for quality. They enjoy their work, and so therefore they don't need that kind of supervision. The finish that we use is a very modern type of finish. It's a, it's a varnish, it's a polyester varnish. It's used by very few people, mostly because it's very difficult to get, and unless you, you produce a certain quantity of guitars, it wouldn't be feasible for you to use. It took a long time to learn how to use this particular product, mostly because there's no, you can't read books on it, you can't, there's no, no information, even the manufacturer only knows how to produce the product. He doesn't know how to apply it to a musical instrument. It's one thing to apply it to a, a chair or a table, but to apply it to a musical instrument that vibrates is a whole different matter.
The first time I came to Victoria was in 1972 on our honeymoon and liked the place. It was a tremendous place. I lived in Vancouver before but never came to, to Victoria. Uh, we came here the following year and the following year after that. This was from Toronto. And eventually in 1977 just decided to make the move and come to Victoria. The climate is great. It, it's very easy for us to, uh, to make our guitars. And it's just uh, a real good place for this kind of thing. And also it's fairly central for us in, in a way. Uh, Japan is very is close. Uh, um, the American market is close and Western market is good for us as well. So Victoria seemed to be a good place to go. We sell guitars to many countries at this point. We sell guitars in Germany, Italy, France, England, uh, just many countries. W one of the nicest countries to deal with is Japan. We deal with some, with a very large company. They're called Kiowa. And even though the company, this is the interesting, even though the company is extremely large, it has, uh, it likes to deal with people on a one-to-one -one basis. You know, we receive letters from them uh, pretty well weekly, and they uh, they are handwritten. And what's nice about it, it's addressed to my family, to my wife, and to myself. And it's nice to deal with people that are in a in a real commercial situation and still deal with people on a one-to-one -one basis, even though there are hundreds and hundreds of officials in a specific company. One of the things that we've done that, again, very few other people, or it was done again in the 20s, but not to this, to this stage, was to do the inlays. We use mother of pearl and abalones and ivories from pretty well all over. The, uh, the abalone we buy in, um, in a shell form from either California or Mexico. The uh, mother of pearl comes from Australia. We get barrels of those. And um, ivory, of course, from Africa. And uh, although ivory cannot be purchased today so readily, uh, we were fortunate enough that uh, seven or eight years ago we were able to get large quantities of ivory, and we have enough to last us a lifetime. One of the most uh, rewarding things about my jobs is, is being able to turn a, either a television or a radio or watching or going to a concert and, and watching one or two or more performers playing on the Larrabee guitars. It's, uh, and the same applies to the people, the, the employees or the people associated. It's quite, a, it's quite an honor and it's quite a, re a rewarding, you know, to work so hard and so much dust and noise and so forth, and then to be able to go into a, a wonderful environment, a very artistic situation, and see the guitar that only a few months ago was in the workshop as a bunch of piece of wood and uh, just uh, nothing, sawdust and glue and things and so forth, and to watch this piece of art that's now being played, is a, it's a wonderful feeling. Let's go. Great, I'll finish.